Tonight, we're going to be meeting two people whose roles are to oversee ethics enforcement in New York. We have seen how state government can implode when bodies designed to oversee the conduct of lawmakers and the governor are either designed to fail or have serious conflicts of interest. Our first guest tonight is the New York State Inspector General Lucy Lang. Lucy, welcome to Capitol tonight. It's great to see you. Great to see you too, Susan. Thanks so much for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you from New York? I am. I grew up in New York, in the city and in Westchester. My folks are in Columbia County now, and I'm raising my young family in the city. So the role of the inspector general in New York is really expansive. Um, you have jurisdiction over executive branch agencies, departments, commissions like JCOP and authorities in the state. And the IG also is responsible for monitoring big infrastructure projects, like for example, the Mario Cuomo Bridge. And as of June, you have the responsibility for allegations of corruption in the gaming and horse racing industry. So do you believe, uh, Lucy Lang, that it's problematic at all that the IG is chosen by the governor to serve? There are some people who think that makes it a conflict of interest. My top priority as inspector general is enhancing transparency to the public about the functions of this office. That includes in shining a light on the investigations that have been undertaken in the past, and we've taken unprecedented steps at opening up the letters and reports that the office has put out uh, reflecting on the investigations that we've undertaken. With respect to the relationship with the governor's office, the inspector general in the past actually has investigated governors and governor's uh, executive chamber, and there's no statutory bar on that. All right, so the last IG uh, did recuse herself after there was a leak of a Jacob discussion related to Cuomo friend Joe Percoco. For, uh, for our viewers, this is a complicated story, uh, but one of the Jacob commissioners at the time, Julie Garcia, was told Cuomo was unhappy with her support for an investigation by Jacob into Percoco, something that was supposed to be a secret and later, the IG's office found nothing to her allegation, which prompted her to resign. So, Lucy Lang, none of this reflects well on the office of the inspector general that you now occupy. Are you going to be changing anything? The office has a rigorous conflict of interest policy, which I am working to reinforce. Every one of the between five and 10,000 complaints that comes into this office annually is assessed for conflicts of interest and people are recused as necessary. I tend, intend to codify that policy and ensure that in every case, we're in compliance with state ethical standards and the absolute highest standards of integrity that the public should expect from an office with this large of a mandate. So how, how are things, in that particular instance, how will things change within the IG's office? With respect to the process for assessing conflicts of interest, with, we with, will be codifying written recusals when someone has an existing relationship that results in the need for a conflict of interest. We will, will make sure that people who are walled off from cases have no contact with uh, the, the matters before the office. And if there were to be a case that came before the office from which the entirety of the office had to be recused, then the entire matter would be handed off to another agency like the attorney general's office or a local law enforcement authority. Is the IG's office going to be looking into that Jacob leak? Will it continue to look into that Jacob leak? I can't speak to pending investigations before the office, as you know. All right. Um, you mentioned at the top that that transparency was a key for you. And I'm wondering if the IG is in charge of uh, seeing that agencies comply with Governor Hochul's agency transparency plans. She's been pretty clear that that's one of her top priorities. That's right. And the agencies have all been asked to provide comprehensive transparency plans. Right now, we are working really diligently at the inspector general's office to make sure that we are in compliance with the highest possible standards of transparency. That has included uh, publishing previously unpublished letters, uh, public reports that were previously subject only to FOIL requests. It's included building for the first time ever a public facing social media uh, portfolio on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and encouraging the public to use those venues to bring complaints into the office. So it has the dual function both of, of increasing our transparency and 
of eliciting more information about government misconduct, which we're charged with investigating. Right. Um, there is, so we're going to be speaking with the head of the office, the Commission on Judicial Conduct, in a moment. But, um, you know, there's your office, there's the AG, there's, uh, you know, all J. Cope. There are a lot of oversight agencies in New York. So, how do you draw a line between what the IG does, which is you, and what J. Cope does, or what the controller does? Our primary obligation by statute is to investigate corruption, fraud, and waste in the executive covered agencies. So that includes upwards of 100 state agencies and thousands and thousands of state employees. It's huge. Our work is, it is huge. And our work uh, ranges from individual allegations of fraud and waste to much more systemic level issues. And I'm committed to ensuring that we treat each one of those complaints with equal validity as we conduct an investigation, but also to working across the state at the many uh, different, at the multiple different offices of the inspector general to identifying areas where there are commonalities amongst complaints so that we can really take advantage of the report writing and policy recommendation function that this office uniquely has in order to call upon covered agencies to improve their functioning. So I know you already have a lot on your plate, um, but what about oversight over the Office of Cannabis Management? Is that you, and if not, who? Uh, to date, that is not part of our portfolio, but I'm looking forward to exploring ways in which we can help support the state as it moves into a new era in terms of cannabis management. You definitely have a lot on your plate. We have been speaking with the new Inspector General of New York State, Lucy Lang, and it has been a pleasure. Thank you. Susan, I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Be well.